Hello everyone, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking. And today we're going to do an episode I am going to call Vortexes and the Greenies. The warm wormholes of our future. So, and then you'll you understand what the word green means here in a minute. So, so I've heard and done some pretty uh, interesting things uh, in my life. And uh, I don't know, maybe today you're going to feel I've kind of stepped a little bit farther than normal in my uh, episodes. So, anyways, bear with me a little bit. At the very least, it's going to be a li- it's going to be fun, anyways. So, there there were these uh, legendary uh, green pagan giants, okay, that h- hung around the British Isles and, and in Europe in general, in in years gone by. Uh, but some people say they're still here, and they're actually when they or there in Europe or British Isles. But also people say they could very well be here in the United States. So the, the giants, these green giants, come by different names, and some of them are such as uh, Green Jack, Jack in the Green, Green George, and of course Green Man. Um, and in the United States, of course, we have something called the, the Jolly Green Giant, which is, uh, I guess, a uh, canned food empire. Uh, but it's sort of, it's part of this greeny uh, kind of theory, pagan kind of greeny theory. And uh, the one, the G- Jolly Green Giant, of course, if you all have seen in commercials, kind of hangs out with kind of fairy people or, or green little wee people. And they also their skin is also kind of a greenish glow to it. So the theory goes is that these green beings probably are traveling in and out of vortexes, or as one scientist has called it, wormholes. Uh, scientists speculate that inter uh, inter universe wormholes uh, pass between different universes. Okay, and wormholes uh, I guess have been validated. Uh, uh, from relativity studies and uh, particle physics. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I'm just going to call them vortexes and not wormholes because uh, I, I don't want to open up a can of worms here, I guess. So, I've, But I've been around vortexes probably all my life in one form or the other. And one time, uh, I was in Idaho, and I was sitting next to what I was told was one of the largest in the world, largest vortex. And it was it was quite strange to sit near it. Um, it, it had a feeling that uh, I've heard very similar to when people sit in the middle of a crop circle. Okay, there was a feeling. Uh, a, I was a little lightheaded. You know, and there was this really weird push and pull on my body, uh, which was really strange. And, but it was a pleasant feeling at the same time, but quite unnatural. Uh, and these feelings didn't stop basically until I got probably 15 to 20 feet away from the edge of the vortex area. So, and then another weird thing is when, when I did get out of the vortex itself, um, I, uh, suddenly above us, and this, this was, I was with, uh, my friend Kiwoni and he actually dows this particular vortex and he dows his vortexes. He's been doing it all his life. So I count on him to find us a really cool one. And this one happens to be extremely cool. But anyways, the rest of the story is, and I've talked about this before, was that right above us in the kind of in the same circle of the vortex itself, the sky, it was a very rainy and cold day. The sky kind of opened up and the sunshine came right through, uh, actually on us. And it was really amazing because it was snowing and it was really bad weather. But anyway, something weird happened. Now we also were out there looking and hanging out kind of with Sasquatch. So we're not too sure if, if it had something to do directly with the vortex itself or something the Sasquatch kind of had something to do with. We really, I really don't know on that. But anyways, it's pr- pretty profound. So one thing I know for sure, vortexes have a profound effect on the human body uh, when you get into them, okay? So 
back to Kiwani. So he dows this particular site we were talking about. And, and many times he would go out in the woods and he would douse vortexes and he would sit there with his dog Comanche. And the really interesting about it is his dog would constantly be moving his head back and forth like he was watching uh, some types of beings or creatures moving in and out of these vortexes, which I thought was pr pretty amazing. Now, many times Kiwani didn't see any of this, but his dog definitely did. But on a couple occasions, he did see some Sasquatch that were moving in or out of a vortex into, into the area, the surrounding area. Um, but I, you know, I, I think which is really important to know is that Sasquatch does use these type of vortexes and they move in and out or various places, etc. Because I believe, like Kiwani, is that they are dimensional beings. Or some of them are dimensional beings, maybe not all of them. So, then, I lived in Utah several times. And on one, one time I lived there, I, I met to interview this woman who had two experiences on, uh, with vortexes on I-80. And as you probably know, if you know anything about Utah, I-80 kind of goes between Salt Lake City and, uh, and Park City. And I lived at the top of that uh, on Parley Summit. Anyways, I would travel that quite frequently. And this, this woman I met and interviewed, we, she, w I was talking about vortexes with a bunch of people. Anyway, she chirped in and said, hey, she had some experiences, so I ended up interviewing her. And one time she said, and she said, you won't believe this. And I said, typically, I believe just about everything people tell me if they seem very sincere. She said she saw a green man, a huge green man, kind of moving between mountaintops in the Wasatch Mountains. Uh, she said it was unbelievable. She, she just couldn't believe this at all. Now, one of the things you got to know is this particular woman was, was LDS or Mormon. And, and I know she didn't drink. And I know she was in high-end drugs, and she was very sincere. And in fact, she held a job, a pretty high position. I think it was in the University of Utah, actually. So that was one of her experiences involving what we, th we thought was definitely a vortex situation. The second one was also on I-80. And this was really pretty strange also. She said, suddenly, out of almost nowhere, there was this herd. It looked like a Mustang's was running next to her car. Now, she said she was moving at about 70 miles an hour, and they stayed with her for about five minutes. Now, if you any, know anything about horses and the speed of a horse, probably the fastest horse ever, probably for a very short period of time, probably uh, horses are able to go probably 50 to 55 miles an hour, and that is only for a few race horses, basically. Uh, not 70 miles an hour and not for five minutes. So she said these things came out of nowhere, and they it didn't seem. To, she said it didn't seem to affect anybody else except for her. Even though these horses were running next to her on I eighty, uh, so so anyways, uh, anyways I thought that was pretty pretty incredible. That's for sure. And anyways, so she definitely had the feeling that this was actually a vortex situation. Okay. I think it was a vortex situation. You know, I've talked to other people around the country that have had these similar type experiences. I know of one, another really interesting one that involved animals, and this was uh, kangaroos. There was like 15 kangaroos going across the interstate highway um, I, in the middle of nowheres in Illinois. Uh, there was never reports of any kangaroos getting out of a zoo or anything. But anyways, this guy said the same thing. They seemed to come out of nowhere. They came hopping across the freeway. Uh, actually, other people seemed to have seen them uh, and kind of slowed down. But he said it was incredible. And I've, I, I think I had about five stories, and they were about animals that seemed to come out of nowhere and seemed to indicate that a vortex had opened up or something had opened up, and these things had come out. And I'm sure uh, other people that will probably hear this video will probably come come in and comment and say yes they probably did too because it seems to be fairly common and pretty dang strange that's for sure so in conclusion vortex probably exist as confirmed by solid observation and scientific evidences uh, 
there are hundreds of wormholes and vortexes on the earth letting things move freely back and forth. Uh, someday uh, we will maybe we'll be able to use these stargates, as you can also call them star stargates, to explore other universes. And we may not even need um, spacecrafts to do this. We may only need maybe some special protective suits. So I think it's pretty cool. And I think one of the things I always say is pay attention. And at the very least, it is fun. It's fun to talk about. How true it is, I don't know, but it is fun to talk about. Anyways, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm sure you had all kinds of questions, and hopefully you don't think I'm too crazy. I'm sure there will be some comments on Reddit thinking I'm completely lost my mind. So anyways, with that said, we'll see you. If you have any comments, please comment here, or you can send me a private email at dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Bye-bye.